Are you loaded? Well, you're about to be because we're making model railroad freight car loads on Ron's Trains and Things right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more videos about model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. As you begin building a model railroad fleet, eventually you find that you have a lot of open cars running around your railroad that need loads. Cars like open flat cars, center beam flat cars, gondolas, and well cars just don't look like they have a purpose until they have a load to carry around your railroad. Now there are all kinds of manufacturers that make loads for these cars, but I find it a lot of fun and a great way to save money by making my own loads for these cars. So today I'm going to show you how to make some loads for two of those cars. First I'm going to show you how to make lumber loads for center beam flat cars, and then I'm going to show you how to make at least temporary stand-in containers for your well cars as well. What kind of freight cars do you have on your railroad that need loads? Check out the card up here in the corner and respond to the poll there and tell me what kind of freight cars you have that need loads on your layout. Before we get to making those freight car loads, I do want to take a moment to talk about my new Patreon page. I try not to talk much about cost on my videos, but buying and upgrading equipment and software can be very expensive. And those of you who enjoy and benefit from my videos regularly may want to take the opportunity to invest in, the, in them as well. So in the closing of this video, I'm going to include a card to my Patreon page. There you can go find out my vision for the future for Ron's Trains and Things, some of the things that will help me keep my production standards high, and help me keep making quality model railroading videos. You'll also learn about some of the rewards and incentives that I'm offering for those who would like to help support Ron's Trains and Things. So be sure and watch for that at the end of this video, and I really appreciate it if you just go check it out. I also need to take a moment to recognize another great Model Railroad YouTube channel, and that's Roy's channel over at the N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision. Roy reached 1,000 subscribers a few weeks ago as well, and he held a little contest in which he asked those who entered to offer ideas for videos on his channel, and he chose one winning video entry to uh, do for his channel, and also to give a great shout out for that channel, and it just so happened that he chose my suggestion. He gave me a great shout out on his channel, and Roy, I really appreciate the kind words about Ron's Trains and Things. I want to thank you for that. And I want to encourage those of you who may not have already subscribed to Roy's channel to go check it out. I'm going to include a link to it in the description down below, and also a link in an end card at the end of this video, so be sure and watch for that. Now we're going to work a little bit on the computer, and then on the workbench to build some great freight car loads for your center beam flat cars and for your well cars. So let's go get started. I want to start off by talking to you about those lumber loads for center beam flat cars. Now you can get on Google and search for center beam flat car lumber loads and you can find all kind of images, images just like this one uh, where you can see that you have got uh, a load of lumber and it, it wrapped. Uh, each, uh, each stack of lumber is, is wrapped individually here. They ha always, uh, nearly always have the logo of the company, uh, the lumber company that is shipping it on those. And these kind of loads are very easy to simulate in a way that's very realistic and nice. I'm going to show you a couple here. This is a full car. As you see, it is completely loaded. Uh, sometimes you find them not quite fully loaded, like this one here. A uh, sm little bit smaller order and didn't quite fill the car. One thing you will note, and you want to make sure you note this whenever you uh, go to make your load, and that is the fact that whenever a car is not fully loaded, it is still loaded in such a way as to keep it symmetrical from the left side to the right side of the car, and also as much as possible from one end of the car to the other. Uh, in other words, you'll notice here that this stack of lumber that doesn't go all the way down, uh, it matches the stack of lumber on the other side. And I can guarantee you this stack of lumber here uh, is also mirrored by one of uh, the same length on the other side. You'll always see either the gap in the middle here with the two sides uh, stacked equally, or sometimes you'll see it stacked in the middle with uh, equal amounts of space on each end left open. 
Uh, the reason for that is it helps to balance the load. It keeps, uh, it avoids the problem of the car getting overbalanced to one side or the other. Uh, helps keep the load distributed evenly on the car, which uh, is just safer whenever it is in transport. So you'll want to remember that because it's a lot more interesting sometimes to model some of these loads not quite fully loaded, and you want to make sure that you make your two sides symmetrical. Whenever we make these loads, obviously we'll be making a load for each side of the center beam flat car, so we want to make them symmetrical. To make your lumber loads, you need to begin in some kind of a word processor, or in my case, I'm using Microsoft Publisher. This works great for this. And the first thing you want to do is you want to lay out a grid that uh, shows you, first of all, the length of the load. You want to measure the, the actual load area of the car. Uh, this particular grid is set up for uh, red cabooses in scale 79 foot center beam flat car. And in this case, uh, the actual load area I have is about 70 feet, uh, which is actually about a little less than six and a half inches. And so this length shows me the load area that I have to work with, and this is actually a sketch of how the load is going to look size-wise. Then you'll notice that I have gridded this off uh, with these black lines, and these represent the individual lumber stacks. Now in this case, I'm representing 16-foot lumber stacks. So uh, 16 feet and in scale is about 2 and 3 sixteenths inches, and you see I've got these lines demarcating that. So this kind of shows me the stacks of lumber. Now these lines mostly are black, but you see I've started to go in and gray some of these lines. You want to make the lines between your stacks a dark gray color rather than a black because it just gives you a better, more realistic uh, look to the shadows in between the stacks. The black looks very stark. And plus you're going to see we're going to do something else in black and we want it to stand out. So the gray gives a nice shadow look, a nice dark gray color for the lines between the stacks. And one of the things that I do like to do is I like to offset these just a little bit from here to there. Uh, like this, I'll just offset that just a little because a lot of times when these are put on the, uh, on the freight car, the stacks don't line up absolutely perfectly. So if you offset them just a little, uh, you get a, a more realistic look to, uh, to your load. So when you get this gridded off, whether you want 16 foot or 12 foot or 8 foot stacks, however you want to do that, just make sure you know in your scale how far that is. Use the ruler guides in your word processor or in, in publisher and uh, and make those lines to demarcate the stacks. At that this point then we need some logos to go on these stacks. And what I do is I literally go on the internet and I look to see if I can find a logo for the uh, particular lumber company that I am uh, shipping the lumber from. And sometimes you can find a logo like this one from Palco. It's just uh, really just the right shape to uh, work on uh, on lumber stacks uh, can easily be manipulated. I cut this little part off. Uh, another way to go, and this gives you a very realistic look, and that is these pictures here literally are pictures that I have cropped out of uh, pictures of actual lumber loads on center beam flat cars. And so you see you kind of get the wrinkles in, uh, in the covering of the uh, the lumber stacks here and that that'll give you a very realistic look when that prints out especially if you're printing out especially if you're making these uh, in a, a larger scale like HO or O scale uh, so you, you want to crop out these um, these logos and then you're literally going to take them and you're going to uh, place them on that grid that we worked on just a few minutes ago and you're going to come out with a stack of lumber with your logos. Now you'll notice here, uh, and you will notice if you look at the prototype pictures, the, the logo is not always centered on the lumber stack. In fact, sometimes it wraps around the corner of a lumber stack, and so you don't even see the whole logo, and that's why you see this here. Literally, I have pushed the, the logo over so that it's wrapping around the corner on this particular stack, and then you have a full one here. Uh, these these shrouds that they cover these lumber stacks in are just very long uh, pieces of uh, material, and they just have the repetition of the uh, 
of the logo on them and so they will wrap around the corners and end up in all kinds of ways so don't just line them up perfectly on center make it interesting make a, some of them partial and and uh, some of them wrapping around corners and that'll give you a good look for your lumber load and then you'll see I've come back and made some black lines all of these lumber stacks are going to be banded together tied together uh, with uh, steel tie bands and they are almost always black in color so literally I have just come and put some black bands around uh, all of the lumber stacks and, and these are 16 foot stacks so uh, I'll take that back these are 12 foot stacks so I put three bands around each one and you see they're not all perfectly lined up because they certainly wouldn't be perfectly lined up on the load and then you'll notice on the bottom and the top I've extended those bands way up above uh, the edge of uh, the lumber stacks and that's because on, on the bottom this won't show that'll just be cut off but on the top uh, this um, this shroud will wrap around the top of these lumber loads and so I want the bands to wrap around as well and those will show on the top of your flat car so you want to extend those up so that they uh, can wrap around your loads and that's going to give you a, a very 3d effect on on your loads and make them look very realistic I'll show you one other example that I have here uh, this Palco uh, this is actually made for a microtrains center beam flat car it's a 69 foot flat car I also have one here uh, for Riverside Lumber and this is made for a uh, Red Caboose uh, 79 foot flat car so a larger car load and here um, you, you notice I've done much the same thing now that banding is a little wider on this it's a little more pronounced uh, but you see I've got all of the the logos on the shrouds that they don't line up perfectly the the loads themselves don't line up absolutely perfectly but it gives a very realistic look to the load so when you get this far you get your lumber loads made at this point you're going to want to print those out and uh, the, the better quality printer the better off you are uh, so you can get a, a, a nice looking print to this uh, in, in whatever scale you're working in and then we'll come back and turn these into a load for the car here is uh, one of the loads that I made on Publisher that I have printed out. And this, you can see, is a, a full load um, for Weyerhaeuser Lumber. And this is one that's made for the 79-foot uh, flat car, center beam flat car by Red Caboose. I have another one here that I'm actually going to be making. And I've already cut this one out, and I'll show you how I did that. And this is a Riverside Lumber, and this is a smaller lumber, lumber load. You can see it's partial, but it's also shorter. Uh, I want uh, one or two of these cars on my layout to run with small enough loads that you can actually see through the visible window parts of the center beam flat car. So uh, this is going to be one of those loads, and we're going to be putting this one together in just a few moments. What you need to make the heart of these loads is a piece of wood. Now this, obviously I'm zoomed in, you can't see the whole thing, uh, but this is actually balsa wood, and this is one quarter inch thick by one inch wide, and this is a, actually a three foot long piece, and we're going to cut this to size. The quarter inch thickness is perfect for uh, the width from the center beam out to the edge of the car, perfect for the width of the lumber loads. Uh, but I'll be cutting it to length and to height and then wrapping my uh, uh, paper lumber load shroud around it to uh, to make that. So I'll show you how I do that. Here is one that I have made previously. And you can see, literally, I just cut it to height. I cut it to length just as it would fit uh, inside of uh, uh, a, a car like this one here. And then I wrapped the shroud around it on the other side. And I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. Now you can see as I have cut this paper shroud for this lumber load, uh, first of all I've cut just even along the bottom of, uh, of the bottom of the load itself. This is going to line up right along the edge of the block of wood because you're not going to see the bottom of uh, this load at all. I've cut a, a little more than a quarter of an inch of extra white along the ends as those will wrap around the ends. Again, you don't really want to see that white uh, because it doesn't have the um, the printed logos on it, but if you do see the end, you'll at least be seeing some, some white 
paper that might mimic the shroud rather than just the end of the wood. I've also cut more than a quarter of an inch uh, extra along the top, all the way along, again with the, uh, the stripes simulating my tie bands. And that way those will uh, reach across the top. Usually the tops of these are not printed, so uh, you'll just see the white shroud there with the tie bands across. And then here where uh, the stack is, is offset because it's uh, higher on the ends, uh, I've just cut down along the edge of that... Um, of that piece of the shroud right to the corner on both ends and so that'll allow me to wrap that over the top uh, here and here now the one thing you're going to be missing whenever you wrap this onto your block of wood is this end right in here uh, the wood is going to show so what you're going to want to do is cut a little strip of paper to glue around that piece of of the block right on the end of these um, pieces that stick up here where, where this is offset. Now if you were making a full load that wouldn't be an issue but with an offset load you got to make sure that you cover uh, all of the bare wood that's going to be showing there so we'll cut a little strip and put it there. Now we're going to take our paper shroud to the board that we're going to use for the block inside of this. Now I could measure this and uh, cut it very precisely that way uh, but it's also uh, very, very easy just to use your paper and mark precisely where you want uh, where you want to cut this. First, I'm going to line it up to cut the overall length. And you see, I'm going to line up the edge of my printed shroud uh, right with the end of this board. Now, I have already taken this board and used um, a, a, my my razor saw and a little miter box and cut a, a nice square end on the end that I want to begin with because I want that to be uh, to be square on on the ends uh, and as I line my paper shroud up here if anything I want to pull my shroud to where it, it maybe hangs over the off the end just a little because I want to make sure I've got the shroud completely covering the, the front surface of this pa uh, of this block and if it wraps around the end a little bit that'll be okay um, I don't want the white paper to be showing on the front edge so I'm going to uh, to line that up there I'll make a nice mark right there now for my overall height I'm going to kind of do the same thing and I'm going to line it up right on the bottom because that's how I want this to uh, to work if anything I'll hang over just a tiny hair okay and then I'm going to pull this little piece up here very carefully not to crease it but I'm going to make a mark right there right at the top and I'm going to do the same thing down here on this side. I'm going to pull that up, make sure it's lined up, make a little mark right at the top of that piece. And that's going to be my overall height. And then I'm going to try to come in here and make a mark right where this is. You can't really see me making the mark because I'm kind of doing it under the paper. But uh, I can do, do this and make a mark right where that lower section is the top of it is and when I pull this away you see what I have uh, now I'm going to come in with a steel ruler and I'm going to just mark out these lines I'll turn it around this way so it's right and flat this is my very top line and I'm going to make a mark all the way along there and then this is my lower line, and this doesn't have to be quite as long. The points that I've marked on here actually kind of mark the end points, but I'll mark a little further than that along there. Uh, and those will also make the marks for where that uh, for where that needs to be. Then I'm going to come in with a square, and uh, I can square off the end here where I'm going to cut the overall length. And then I can also square these. This lower mark, remember, was right in that corner. And so I'm going to mark those just like so. And there I have uh, exactly where I need to cut this. I need to cut this to length here. I'm going to cut the full, uh, I'm going to rip this full piece off the top here. And then I'm going to cut into these a little bit. and and I have to carefully cut this. I'll do all that with my razor saw. You don't need to watch me cut that. Uh, and then we'll be back to uh, work on the shroud in just a few minutes. 
Here I have cut out my block for my lumber load and I've come in with uh, just some light 220 grit sandpaper and sanded the rough edges just enough to get the burrs off of it. Uh, doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, it's going to be covered up. I just uh, want to remove the burrs that are going to uh, maybe interfere, interfere with my gluing. And then we're going to start working our paper shroud right over the top of that. Now to glue this on, I'm going to use just simple uh, Elmer's white glue. Uh, you can use basically any white glue that you have on hand. And I just want a very thin coat of this on here. So I'm going to pull it on and then I'm literally just going to spread it around with my finger. I don't, I don't want it too thick as it will curl my paper up, uh, but I do want it completely covering the surface of the wood. I, I don't want any places uh, where it won't um, be making good contact. And then with the glue just on the front surface as of right for right now, I'm going to line this up right on the edges, right along the bottom. Make sure I got it at the ends. Okay, kind of get it in position. And then I'm going to start in the middle. I'm just going to work my way down. Be careful to keep it in position. I'm going to work my way down towards both ends from the center just to get any air bubbles out that might be in there. Do this carefully. Again, this, this is paper. And now that it's in the glue, it's damp paper, so it can tear very easily. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to put too much lateral pressure on it. Okay, there, that's got it glued on the surface. Now, with the shroud glued on the front surface, I want to come and cover these little ends like I told you about earlier. And to do that, I've got just some little strips of paper that are cut uh, the same height as that. And I'm going to do this the same way I did the front, just going to glue these little strips in. Uh, I want to do it now so that um, so that my shroud will cover the back edges of uh, this paper anywhere that it kind of uh, bleeds over. So I'm going to, just going to spread a light amount of glue there and also a little bit on the back because they're going to wrap around the back there. And then I'm going to take that little strip and I'm just going to put it in place. I want to make sure it goes all the way to the front edge of my block. And then it's going to wrap around the back. And this one is just a little bit tall, but that's okay. I can come back and, and trim that in a minute. Now I'm going to pressure, put some pressure on that until it really sticks. And I'll let that dry for just a minute while I put the, the other one on the other end. Now with those on, we're ready to start uh, working the, the top of our shroud around uh, the top of our block. And so again, we're going to put a little a little bit of white glue on these areas. Again, I, this is another area that this is going to show a little. So I want to spread that glue on thin so it doesn't curl my paper up too much. And then I'm just literally going to kind of curl, roll this paper over. Now I'm going to curl that right down onto the top of that block of wood. And I'm not going to worry about curling it around to the back yet because I don't have any glue on the back yet. And I want to get a nice edge here. This edge on the front, I mean, you want it to be fairly straight. It doesn't have to be super sharp because, again, you're working with a lumber load here. And uh, that paper would curl a little bit as it comes over the top of a lumber load anyway. Now, we'll work this on around on the ends. Okay, that's looking good. Now, on the very ends, you see I've got this turned over and I've got this little piece that still sticks out here. And so I need to do something in order to make a corner here. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to kind of fold that a little bit right up to the end. I'm literally, I'm going to cut where this is folded. I'm going to cut right along the edge, but I want to make the cut on the top, not on the side. Okay, so I'll make a cut so that, and that just goes back to the block of wood. Um, put a little glue on my end here. 
spread it. Then I want to fold the top piece down straight around the block and then the front piece around. And I need to add a little bit of glue because I got more paper up here that I'm folding over. I need to put a little glue on that paper. That front one around. And there we have it. We've got a pretty nice corner. Um, the only thing that leaves us to do is, is this edge here. And for it, I'm going to put some glue on the back. Um, actually, i got to do the back of all of them here. So um, spread a little glue here. This piece just folds down right over the back. Trying to be careful not to get glue from my fingers on the surface that I want to show. Now the rest of these edges, I normally would fold down, but they are so small. I think I'll be better off trimming them. So I'm just literally just going to trim them as close as I can. Crop them right up along the block. Um, you won't see this back at all. And in fact, in uh, most center beams, you won't see the back edge of the top at all. Because it will be covered by the top eye part of the... Uh, of the center, center beam of the flat car. Like so. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of go back and press all of my edges down and make sure that they are set well in the glue. And there you have it. I have uh, uh, half of a load. This is uh, one side. I need to make one that that mirrors it for the other side of this car. But I'm bringing in my center beam flat car here. And you see I can place this load in here. And I got a nice load in this center beam flat car. And then this one that actually allows me to see through the window parts of the, um, of the flat car itself which makes for an interesting load. I get the one on the other side and, uh, and that will help. Let me show you one last thing about these because these sit in here loose. Uh, I was concerned that um, might be a problem with them vibrating out as they go around the layout. So literally what I do with mine is I cut a couple of short pins just from uh, brass rod and here you can see on this one I think right here it's just a short about a one quarter inch piece of uh, of brass wire that I have cut off and I just push it in this balsa is so soft you just push it into this side and I actually have two there's one that goes on the other end too and I put them in the place where they will go through the window part of the center beam flat car and then allow it to line it up and then just push it into the wood on the other side and um, that gives just a, a, a little bit of, uh, of a pin that holds the two loads together on the two sides of the flat car and uh, they stay in there very sturdy. Uh, they can be pulled out so that if you want to run them to somewhere loaded, take the loads out and then run them back empty, you can certainly do that. But while they're running on the layout, that helps hold them in place. So there's a way to make some very nice looking, some very realistic uh, lumber loads. And uh, I'm actually going to sh show you a couple more that I have made here. So uh, you can see what they look like. There's that wire houser full load. And uh, then here is one. These are all red caboose cars. Here's the microtrains car, which is a little shorter car with a Palco lumber load. So you see you can get a, a variety of looks and uh, can make some really nice loads there that can give your cars a purpose as they're running on your railroad. So I hope you'll give that a try. I told you I would also show you how to make some intermodal containers for your well cars. Uh, I have a number of 48-foot well cars on my layout, and I've had them for quite some time. 
and I needed loads for them, but uh, didn't necessarily have the money when I first got them to go buy uh, nice containers to put in them. Ultimately, I want good-looking container models to put in them, but in the meantime, I, I wanted uh, some kind of a good stand-in, and so I found a, a good stand-in uh, that you can use with uh, paper, and I'm going to show you those right now. Um, literally, these are photographs of all the sides of the con of a container that have been put together by someone, and uh, they've been put in, in such a way that these can be sized and printed out and cut out and then folded to make a, a pretty good looking container. Uh, now, if you look at them up close, they're not as nice as a, a container model that you might buy, but they are pretty good for a couple things. Number one, for me, they have served very well as stand-in containers, and I'll show you some of those uh, in a little bit. In fact, I still have a few that are running on my layout. Uh, they're also great if you have a, a large intermodal facility and you need just the large stacks of containers, especially maybe against the backdrop. Um, you can find pictures of these where you don't even have to make them all individually. It literally will give you a, a, a stack of containers that you can put together all at once. And, um, and they, they, work, they work very nicely for that. Now, ideally, you want to take these and you want to print these, again, with a quality printer. And I print these on cardstock. Now, I'm going to show you some that I, uh, I'm going to put together in a moment that are on paper, just because that's what I had on hand. But if you want to make them to go in your well cars or to stack on your layout, you definitely want to use something heavier, uh, something a cardstock type of a material. And, and you just print these out, and it shows you exactly how to cut them out and fold them together. And you get a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice stand-in for a container. Now, you can find a lot of these container uh, paper printouts on uh, Pinterest. There are tons of them on Pinterest. I, I did a search uh, today just to see how many I could find. These that I have, I actually got from a German website about 12 or 13 years ago. And uh, that website I can't even find anymore. I don't think it exists anymore. Uh, but there are plenty of other places around with a Google search where you can find these. Now, I'm going to offer to you, if you would like to have these uh, containers that I have, you can see I have those, I have four pages of them, or uh, 12 of them all together, and if you are interested in the ones that I have, and if you have access to Microsoft Publisher, uh, I would be glad to send you a copy of this file with these containers, as well as the lumber loads that I showed you earlier which are also in publisher files and if you'll watch the closing of this video I'll tell you exactly how you can get those if you're interested in them and uh, but for now let's go look at how we put these containers together and what they look like on a layout here you see a page of those intermodal containers that I have printed out on plain paper again whenever I make these I typically use them uh, I typically print them on cardstock because uh, they're a little more rigid and uh, but uh, the paper still will work for demonstration purposes and it still looks good you can see here literally it, it gives you a pretty obvious guide as to how to cut it out you just cut along the edges of the pictures themselves now uh, these little tabs they include on here as gluing tabs so you want to be sure and leave the tab although you do need to cut along the edge of the ends up through the tab until you get to that corner uh, to allow you to fold it here's one that I cut out uh, earlier and uh, again, whenever I go to fold these for what I'm going to use, I use the edge of a steel rule to make sure I get my folds nice and crisp and perfect. I'm just going to fold this kind of freehand here to kind of give you a, a sense of it. I actually started folding it earlier. But you can see you just fold along the, the roof lines for the sides, the end. You fold the, the gluing tab under, which gives you something to glue to on the end there. And... Uh, you can already see that that's going to give you a, 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 a decent passable intermodal car. Um, here's one that I folded and glued a little bit earlier. And, uh, you know, if you had that stacked in a, in a stack or, or along uh, the backdrop for an intermodal facility, that's going to look pretty good. And, and even in a well car on your layout, it definitely would make a, a passable stand-in. Uh, if you're like me, uh, I have been purchasing... Uh, 
intermodal container models for several years to fill my well cars. Here are some cardstock containers that have actually been running on my layout for years waiting to be replaced by models. Now, uh, again, up close you can tell that these are paper, but whenever they are in a train uh, a little further away on the layout or whenever they are running by, you, you don't even notice the fact that they are made out of cardstock. Uh, they just make really, really good, passable stand-ins, and I've been slowly replacing these with those models, like I said, for several years, but I don't have to be in a hurry. I can wait until I find exactly the containers that I want, uh, and until I have the uh, the funds to, to purchase those containers, uh, because I've got these good stand-ins. So that's a way that you can make some, some good uh, intermodal container models uh, very inexpensively for your layout, and help fill uh, your uh, your well cars uh, on your layout so that your trains are carrying some commodities as they're running around your layout. These are some great and easy techniques that you can use to provide some quality loads for freight cars on your model railroad, and I hope you'll give them a try. Now with a little bit of research, you can find the right pictures and logos and create your own loads on paper just like I did in the video today. But if you have access to Microsoft Publisher and would like the files that I have shown you today for my lumber loads or for the intermodal containers, I'd be glad to send them to you. Just send me an email at Ron's Trains and Things. Tell me you'd like a copy of either the lumber loads or the containers. Both are already set up for in-scale, so in-scalers could just print them off and use them as they are. Or if you're working in another scale, you can easily go in and manipulate them to the size that you need them. If you didn't respond to that poll about the types of cars that need loads on your layout, be sure and do that before you leave this video. And also, again, please check out my Patreon page. You'll see a link in the card there, as well as in the description below. Well, that's all I have for today, but be sure and join me this Friday as I'm going to be uploading a video announcing the winner of my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Those of you who joined, I know will be watching closely for that, and I look forward to announcing that winner then. And of course, be sure and join me again next Tuesday when I bring you another great model building segment, and I look forward to seeing you then.